Parker. Attention. Rep and run off. Um, it's been a while, but we're happy to see everybody here after a uh, long hiatus. Um, we're going to start off with the um, uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, it's the, this is July. We just had our year. Wow. You saw the fire. Good idea. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, so it's glad to see uh, we have a big crowd here today. Uh, my name is Chef. Uh, glad to see we have a good crowd. Can you hear me now? Maybe just a Maybe just a Maybe just a Okay, can you hear us now? Well, you got to be close. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we've got a new sound system here. We also have a new projector that was put in uh, at the Olympus before the pandemic. Um, is that working now? Or, uh, uh, let's try that one. Try the other one, Shelly. Try the other one. How's this one? Oh, better. Yeah. Uh, you want that lower? Next one. That was the one. Try the one on the. Oh, I turned it up. How's this one now? No. no. <laughs> yeah, much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can tell we haven't done this for a year and a half. <laughs> okay, so we'll use this one as long as this one is worth it. Um, this is a tech club, right? We <laughs> don't have our sound engineers here this morning. Um, but happy to see that we uh, do have a, uh, uh, a big crowd today. We, um, have our coffee and donuts back again, um, and we've got a new crew helping us out with the uh, with the coffee and donuts. So uh, why don't we uh, give them a round of applause? And uh, for the past year, we've been doing trying to get things uh, continuing along the Zoom meetings. Uh, so we've been doing everything over Zoom. We've had our monthly meetings over Zoom. We've had our lab sessions over Zoom. Um, and, uh, and now we're back to uh, in classes over Zoom. And now we're back to uh, uh, doing things in person. So um, glad that you're out to make it and hope you'll be, uh, if you're not currently a member, uh, join the computer club. Um, and if you are a member and if you haven't yet pay your dues. Um, we'll be opening uh, at the lab Mondays and Thursdays from 9 to 12, and you can come in any time and uh, um, pay your dues. You, uh, so that's, that can work as well. So yeah, we all learned to, uh, uh, to do Zoom over the past year. Um, we've done lots of Zoom meetings. Um, even my cat got to uh, uh, join in on some of the Zoom meetings. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she uh, she wanted to uh, uh, to uh, know when the Zoom meeting was, and she just jumped in my lap and got to go off. So we uh, and we learned how to uh, uh, tell people to unmute themselves. So hopefully you all learned how to unmute yourself. Um, some people had problems in muting themselves, and if you uh, <laughs> and if you uh, had had that kind of an issue. Uh, uh, and that was kind of, uh, uh, if, you, if you didn't hit the mute button, that was the same thing as doing a reply all. 
So looks like we're hopefully through most of the uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, we can look back on it now and we'll hopefully go down in history. We can at least uh, uh, try to laugh at ourselves a little bit. Um, uh, one, one little joke that seems to be going around is why did the chicken cross the road? Uh, you know the answer to that one? He wanted to get the other side. side. No, it was because the chicken behind him wasn't doing social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> And they say if you uh, didn't get that joke, then you just wait two weeks and uh, then you get it. <laughs> so, we have a little fireworks here this morning. So, we uh, uh, show you that uh, our agenda. And we usually do this um, each month. And we do meet here each month on the second Thursday of the month. And that will continue um, into 2022 as well. Um, we do a um, cover our financial report. Uh, we talk a little bit about membership. Um, we talk about computer club matters. Uh, <coughs> we'll give you a little bit of discussion about some of our classes. And since this meeting is open to all residents, we talk about the uh, Sun City community as a whole. And then we'll get on to our feature presentation. And we have a guest speaker this morning uh, who is going to uh, tell us about all the latest updates at the uh, Huntley Library and talk about uh, all the digital resources that are available to us. So we'll start off with the treasures report. And in the past year, it hadn't been, we haven't been doing anything with the uh, report. It was the same from month to month to month. <laughs> Uh, now that we have people renewing their membership and we're uh, starting up again, the lab is now reopening. Um, so we have a, a, a new treasurer's report and we have collected uh, uh, dues so far. And, uh, um, and this shows what, uh, uh, what we've been given, uh, at least for this one past month. Um, our membership as of uh, May was at uh, uh, 1,668. And so far we've had about 51% of the households or about 567 households. And that your membership includes both you and uh, your partner, whoever is living with you. So that uh, um, uh, it's 567 households, but that represents <coughs> about 51% of the uh, uh, of our membership has renewed. So if you haven't renewed, <clears throat> as I say, uh, just come to the lab anytime Mondays and Thursdays from 9 to 12. And we do hold our, our meetings on the second Thursday of each month as we're doing this morning. So the next one will be on Thursday, August 20, uh, August 12th, and then on Thursday, September 9th, and so on. And, uh, and we're now back again live in, in Drenner. <clears throat> and our uh, lab has now reopened. Um, so we can come into the lab. Uh, we have started doing um, live assistance with computer problems. So if you have computer problems, uh, bring them in. Um, you can use the computers in the lab. Uh, we have all of our digitizing equipment working again. Um, and uh, uh, in general, anytime you have a problem with, uh, with phones, Android phones, iPhones, computers, Macs, whatever, um, we're your go-to place. So the only thing we ask is when you come into the lab, don't forget to uh, bring your passwords because we've had to send people home looking for their passwords because we couldn't, couldn't help them because they couldn't uh, remember their passwords if they needed to change it. Uh, <clears throat> always check your newsletters that we send out <clears throat> and emails for uh, class schedules and announcements. Um, we do have two subgroups in the computer club a photo group, which meets on the first Wednesday 
of each month at seven o'clock. Um, actually, this month it's going to be uh, July 14th, so it's going to be a little bit later. Um, we did a, uh, a model shoot uh, uh, this uh, this this month. Um, one of our members uh, brought in some live models, and we did uh, did a camera shoot, and that worked out very well. Uh, we're also hoping to get our Apple group um, going again, so look forward to that. <laughs> And one other thing I'll note is um, if you receive a mail from Microsoft or other vendors that says uh, you need to update your computer, uh, give us a security update, uh, click here. You don't want to do that. That's a hoax. Uh, anytime you get something that says click here or go to this website or download this file, if it's a download, it's probably going to be a uh, uh, malware, and if they're giving you a link to click on, it's going to send take you to a malicious website. So you don't want to do that. Microsoft does not uh, send you uh, emails for security uh, security updates. That being said, you do want to update your computer, so make sure you do update. Um, there have been some recently some uh, uh, a lot of hacks going about, so you want to make sure to protect yourself. That you keep your computers um, updated. Question for you: Can we get rid of that little box from popping up all the time? Malware. Uh, if you're talking about a hoax box, yeah, that little box. If you have malware, then then yeah, you'll need to run malware bytes or something like that. It will bring your computer into the lab and you can assist you with that. <clears throat> Let me uh, mention that uh, while we're talking about this, who might still be? Uh, if you get a, a box that pops up on your screen and it tells <clears throat> your, it gives all these warnings to you that the only way you're going to get this fixed is call this number, the best thing, the best thing you can do is take your finger and turn off your power on your laptop. It's easy. You just hold the power button down for about 10 seconds. The lights will all go out and it will reboot when you take your finger off and press it again. This will reboot the computer and you should get out of it. Now, it might say when it comes back back up that you terminated the program improperly and you want to go back to where you were you say no don't check it's a yellow band it goes right in between the top of the page on a browser it'll say you've uh, terminated the program and it's not uh do you want to go back to where you were you surely don't want to go back to that <laughs> uh, signage that they pop up in the fear that they're trying to develop. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. Um, also, want to give a shout out to all of those in the computer club that have helped. Uh, um, we were doing everything over Zoom the past year, but we had a lot of assistance from uh, uh, many folks in the computer club. Um, so um, let me just give a shout out to uh, uh, to those of you who did help, and if you want to stand, um, I know we have Bill Zaletti who's helped a lot, John uh, Geister, John uh, Sterling, David Good, John Finney, Stan, if you if you helped out at all as a monitor or as new classes, uh, uh, stand as well. All those people have been monitors over the past. Uh, a couple of years. Um, so yeah, thank you all very much. Um, in order for us to uh, uh, to be able to uh, to help you folks in the in the lab and do all of these classes and sessions and all, um, it takes assistance from a lot of folks. So um, if you've got computer skills, um, we welcome your uh, assistance in, in helping out. Um, and even if you don't have computer assistance, we can still use your help. 
Um, we can train you as all kinds of things that we uh, need to assist people with. So I put a sheet over at the uh, a table up here in the front. Walks that way, sheet right there. So if anyone is interested, um, you can certainly come in anytime at the land and talk to any one of us. Um, but if you want to just put your name before you leave this to, uh, this morning, just put your name down on that sheet, and um, we can contact you and uh, uh, and explain uh, to you further what we do. So thanks again. And that brings us to uh, our next order of business today is uh, elections. It's time for doing our elections. Um, I've been president now for two years of this club, and uh, now we're going to uh, uh, do elections for the coming year. So our uh, computer club officers uh, serve for, uh, from July 1st through June 30th for our fiscal year, uh, each year for a maximum of three uh, contiguous terms. And I'm going to invite our past president, uh, Dave Ruby, uh, to conduct the election. Well, first of all, I'll need to ask you, are there any volunteers for any of our elective officers in the audience today? Otherwise, we'll move forward. The board has uh, prepared a slate of officers that the, this quorum will need to approve. Uh, for president, David Good was our vice president. He is now moving up to president. Back up. Oops. Uh, the vice president, the new vice president replacing Dave will be Teresa Palicki. And we will re and uh, re. Oh, whatever we want. I didn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that's exactly what we hear when people bring their computers. I didn't touch it. My grandkids might have. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Secretary of Bali. And treasurer is Howie Husky. Those two are, are repeating, uh, but on a one year basis, continuing forward. And it provides us with continuity of structure. Molly takes all of our minutes and, and does a lot of our uh, documents. <coughs> and David Good is doing a lot of our communication area so that whenever you see a newsletter come, it's probably coming from David Good. Is that going to continue, David? Yes. Okay. Anyway, so these are the slate. This is the slate that I am offering this quorum to approve. Do I hear a motion to approve this slate? Yes. Thank you, George. And a second. All right. Thank you very much. All in favor of this slate continuing in 2021. Aye. Uh, opposed? Thank you very much. Oh, I get a pay raise? Yeah, right. Double nothing. Thank you, Dave, and congratulations to our new slate of officers. Now yeah, we'll move on to uh, uh, training and classes. Uh, we are starting again to um, to have live classes that will be in the computer lab, and uh, let me introduce our training director, Ralph Reams, who is going to uh, talk about that. <laughs> Almost forgot what to do. It's been a, over a year we stood up here and are standing up here talking about the classes, but. All the talk that we've had you know, in the previous few minutes about not opening, be sure when you get the computer club letter from Dave that you open it. And then you need to read it. Right, David? Yes. He said, I'm always getting comments back from people and asking questions. And it's right in my newsletter. They must not have read it. So be sure to read it. Well, yes, we're now uh, back in the lab doing uh, in-person. And we're also um, going to have the Zoom available. If some of the instructors would rather do Zoom. And I, there is one that will. 
Uh, Will Gernick, you probably all know him. He moved to um, Georgia or Alabama. He moved somewhere away, a ways away. He has um, offered to do some Zoom classes um, as we move forward, probably after October or November. So I got him pegged for the new Windows 11. He, he's, he's going to be talking about that because he's into that, that stuff big time. Right now, I have two classes scheduled in the month of July. Uh, they're both the same class. It's an Android class to tell you some things you can do with your Android phone tricks and, and settings and different things like, like that. Uh, the first one is going to be hmm, is it here? July the 20th, and that's going to be in the lab at 7 o'clock in the evening. So we've got a week and a half for that. And then the following uh, 25th, we're going to have one at 1030. So there's going to be two in the lab, the 20th and the 25th. The first one will be at uh, 7 o'clock, and the next one will be at 1030, both in the lab. Working on a couple of other possibilities for uh, classes, and uh, kind of wanted to ask this question. <clears throat> I'm thinking about, believe it or not, setting up a class on, let me put it real politely, planning your own demise. I read somewhere, I think it was in the Bible, that none of us are going to get out of here without having that happen. And uh, some of you know that I, I do uh, work part-time at the funeral home, and you know, I see a lot of situations where, um, yeah, I do, I'm, I'm, I'm upright, I'm not laying down, I'm, I'm upright on there. But anyway, there's a lot of situations that come up where the survivors don't really know what the person wanted, and they're not sure what to do, and uh, thinking that uh, maybe we could offer a class to give people an idea what you might be thinking about, you know, as time goes on, because none of us are getting any younger. So what I want to know is by show of hands, and don't be embarrassed because you're all going to be in this situation, including me, uh, would you be interested in attending a class that talks a little bit about um, what you need to consider as you um, get closer to the time you're going to be leaving this beautiful country? <laughs> All right, I, I will. There's a, there's enough hands. Oh, yeah. I will definitely schedule that. Uh, I don't know if it'll be July or August. And uh, if it's like the cutting the cord class that we used to have on computer, where we're overloaded, we'll do more than one. So that's that's really one of the big things I, I wanted to find out. I do have a couple other possibilities. I'm, I'm working on one for um, uh, social media. You know, like uh, stuff on Facebook and this, this Snapchat. I guess and Instagram. I don't do none of that stuff. But, uh, a lot of you younger people do, so I might have that class. And um, I think, Bill, you said once you get feeling better, you're going to be coming in too. Yeah, Ken, you have a question or a comment? Yeah, the last time to my I should cover something about thinking about your digital assets as well your passwords and all your data, uh, documents. Right. Well, that's all part of your relatives will deal with all of that. You know, that's a good point, uh, and, and we'll make sure we get that into it because I know a good friend of mine died uh, four years ago, maybe five now, and uh, he was a real guru on the computer, and his wife was just the opposite, if you know what I mean. And uh, when, when she tried to get into his computer, she had no idea what the passwords were. I, I don't know if they ever got everything out of it, but that's a good point, Ken, because many of us store things that we want in our computer, but we're not sure why everybody else in there, but certainly somebody needs to know that. You know, when you write the password down or you have a listing somewhere, um, certainly a survivor is going to need to get into whatever you left in the computer. So, yeah, that I'll make sure that that's part of it. And it may be another class, uh, you know, something to, on what you need to prepare for in, in the way of that, as, as well as wills and things. You know, we may get into it more so because, like I said, we're all going to be faced with that. Make sure they don't just list their passwords on the computer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Dave said, make sure you don't just list your passwords on But I got mine on the computer, but I can print mine out too. And my wife knows where the connection is, you know, they print it out again. But, uh, somebody else had their hand up about a question or a comment? Yeah, that would be a, that should be a separate class, what Ken said, because it's a lot of material to cover on preparing for your day as far as financial, uh, wheels, partial return, and stuff like that. Should be a separate class. It's right. a lot of material to cover. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it will be because there, there'll be enough on um, on the initial one, and uh, we're getting into the financial end of it, and uh, wheels and things like that, um, power of attorney, those things that would definitely be a separate class. We'd probably have a, 
an attorney do that? And I think I can get that arranged too. Um, have something on use of dating services. Senior <laughs> <laughs> dating services. That's a good one. Well, I'm going to have to have somebody help me next because I've never done that, so I don't even know how that's going to go. <laughs> my wife was here, she'd be happy, she'd be happy I said that, but I'll tell you, I have no idea how you do that. that, that. So somebody come to me and explain it and, and, and uh, tell me how we do it, and we'll set a class up. I mean, we're, we're pretty easy about setting classes up. The big thing is, is finding an instructor or somebody knows how to do it. So, anyway. Okay, well, no, I, I didn't mean to take so much time, Shelly. I'm sorry. It got to be fun. Uh, the last thing, if, if there's anybody out there that would be interested in helping us do the recording of the meeting, we'd like to have you know one or two people so we could kind of revolve and it's not the same one or two person every time. So it's not real difficult. We don't all those been difficult today because we've got different programs. But um, uh, yeah, come and see myself or um, uh, now it'd be David Good and we'll. Uh, Get you educated. Uh, Ken Kulinski would be the one that would educate you. He's the one that's really good on the program. So, yeah, we would like uh, like to have a volunteer or two that would kind of help us every once in a while record the program. So, thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you in the classes. And once again, we'll be in person and on Zoom as we move forward. Thank you, Al. Uh, yeah, we can't even remember our own passwords, let alone having a survivors remember. Um, so, yeah, as uh, Ralph mentioned, yeah, we need all kinds of people uh, doing all, all different uh, things. Uh, if you're interested in teaching a class or just helping out in the, uh, uh, in the lab, we need people to uh, uh, assist with our display screens, um, setting up the elect electronic display screens and, and the like. So, there are all sorts of things that uh, you can get involved with. So um, feel free after the uh, uh, session this morning to just put your name down on the sheet in the uh, front table or just um, talk to any of us either here or at the lab on Mondays and Thursdays. And we're into July. We've had our Independence Day and uh, this is our July meeting. Um, and as always, we also talk about community matters. So um, this, these are some of the things going on in Sun City. Uh, July 28th, uh, there's a summer social, be an outdoor concert there. They're going to have uh, dinners that you can sign up for, outdoor dinners over at the pavilion. Uh, there'll be an outdoor concert at the amphitheater, and that'll be followed by the board meeting. Um, which uh, will be at six o'clock that day. So it'll be an exciting day on July 28th. Um, any of you who, have, who think you're talented, uh, they're bringing back a, uh, uh, the, well, the last one was the uh, Sun City Idols. This one is going to be Sun City Huntley Has Talent. So if you have any sort of a talent, uh, come on uh, August 16th and you can audition for Sun City Has Talent. So with that, let me introduce a person who uh, is returning. Um, she has presented here in the past uh, from the from our own Huntley Area Public Library. She's going to talk to us about digital resources that are available to you, and she will also give you an update on the construction project uh, that is ongoing. So let me introduce uh, Pam Cardenas. Is this low enough? Oh, Frank, it might not be low enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not. <coughs> Give her a box to stand on. <laughs> be nice, Ralph. Smooth. Smooth running All right, this is better. Yeah. 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 Okay, excellent. All right, well, good morning. Thank you for inviting me to come speak to your group. My name is Pamela Cardenas, and I'm a reference librarian at the Huntley Library. 
I know a lot of you. I see a lot of familiar faces. I'm also glad to see new faces. Through, you'll usually find me at the information desk while at the library. I also spend a lot of time helping our patrons with our electronic resources. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about our construction, and then I'm moving on to updates to our Libby app and some tips for our Hoopla service. I don't have a slide for the construction, but I'll start there. We are currently on track, on schedule with our construction, so that's good. A lot of you have probably been to our new building, so we moved everything into the new building, and our old building is currently under construction. Everything has been gutted on the inside, and you may have noticed as you drive by that they're working on our main entrance, so they reconfigured that so that we don't get the big blasts of cold air we used to get in the winter. Um, handicap entrance, I think, will also be a little bit easier. They're also adding a drive-through to that old building, so we're really looking forward to that in the winter months, right? No one wants to get out of their cars and walk into the library. We anticipate that it will all be done by the end of the year. So when it's complete, they hand over the building to us, and then we have to work our way through a punch list. So we think that will take a couple of weeks as we make sure everything is how it should be, working the way we intended it to. And then we think that January is when we open up the building to everybody. But we've still got six months ahead of us, so it all depends on whether stuff stays on, on schedule. And that's about it for the updates. I, I haven't actually been in or been able to begin to see what the inside of that old building looks like. Occasionally, some people walk through with the hard hats and the vests. I'm hoping they have put up walls by now, but maybe not. So we'll, we'll see. It will all look so great in January. We can't wait for it to be completed. And thank you so much for your patience as we've been going through construction and closures for about a year and a half. Okay, but now I will, well, I've got to move my slide. That's what I've got to do. That will help. Okay, I'm going to start by talking about our Libby app. This is the app that you use to access our Digital Library of Illinois ebook and audiobook collection. A lot of you are probably familiar with this. We had this service, although you might know it as Overdrive. We've had the service about 15, 16 years now, I think. We have 48,000 ebooks and 19,000 audiobooks in this collection. And last year, when the shutdown started happening, we increased the number of checkouts and holds to 10 items each. I don't think we're going to roll that back. We'll probably keep it at that level. And one of the newest things about our Digital Library of Illinois collection is that magazines are now a part of this collection. Some of you might recall RV Digital. They were the company that used to provide our magazines. So there was a, we had a web page on our website where you could read them and you used to use the RV Digital app in order to download the books. Overdrive bought out RV Digital. So that is why magazines are now in Libby and on the Digital Library of Illinois website. My slides are going to demonstrate magazines in the Libby app. But the magazines are also accessible through the digital library website itself and through the Overdrive app. I'll give a little more info about that in a little bit. All of the titles in our RB Digital collection made the transition to Libby. You still have access to back issues. And the magazines are always available, so you don't have any wait lists. Magazines also will not count against your 10 item checklist, so you can check out as many magazine issues as you'd like to. The big difference now is that we have a checkout period for these titles. The checkout period is two weeks, and then Libby will give you the option to renew your loan, or if you don't renew, the issue expires, it gets removed from your account. But if you're not finished with it, then you can just check it out again. And you can keep doing this for as many times as you need to in order to finish the, the magazine issue. If you haven't used the Libby app before and you decide to download and install it, you will be walked through some setup steps. Libby will pinpoint your home library. Usually it can find us pretty easily if you are in the vicinity, but if we don't pop up first, it should say on the area public library. Just search by us by name or by zip code, and we should pop to the top. 
And once you pick your home library, it's going to ask for your library card number. You type that in, Libby remembers it from that point on. You shouldn't have to sign in again. Once you're all signed in and ready to go, what usually opens up is the homepage to our Digital Library of Illinois website. So that's what we're looking at in the screenshot. There are five symbols at the bottom that you'll want to pay attention to, and I'll tell you what they are. The first symbol is the magnifying glass, and that always means search. So tap on the magnifying glass if you have a specific title or author that you want to search for. The little library card is what brings you to this page. So library card means you're going to the library collection of ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines. And then you've got the little Libby head behind the book. And we call that our notification button. That means that Libby has something she wants you to pay attention to, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a little while. The line of book spines is your bookshelf. So anything you check out, that is where you go in order to read it. And our last symbol is the little clock. That is our timeline feature. The timeline is keeping track of titles you have checked out, titles you have placed on hold, and when titles are being returned from Libby. What I want to point out on this slide as well is that at the top of the page, you have our popular magazines collection. If you tap in the middle right on top of that popular magazine, see all 70 titles, it will take you to the page where we have a list of the 70 most popular titles in our collection. The library creates this list. We created it because when the transition happened from RV Digital to Overdrive, Overdrive, some patrons mentioned to us it's really hard to find the magazines we were checking out through RV Digital. So we made the list based on what were the most popular checked out titles in RV Digital. So if you used to read something, you've had trouble finding it, start with this list to see if you can track it down. So I tapped on the middle, popular magazines, see all 70 titles. There we go. Okay, my aim is not quite <laughs> set yet. And once I click on that, tap on that, I am taken to the actual list. So right now we're only seeing the six most popular titles, but if you scroll down, you'll see all 70. The cover in the middle is always the most recent issue, and then the ones on the sides are older issues. You can tap on any of those covers and you'll be taken to the page where you can check out the magazines. I like to tap in the middle because I generally like to see the newest issue first before I start investigating other issues. So my first screenshot here is an example of what the magazine um, detailed information page looks like. I like HGTV magazine, so that's why I went straight to that. <laughs> I have a little description of what the magazine as a whole is about, but then it does give me a little bit of information about specifics about this particular issue. There is a borrow button right there. So if this is the issue I wanted, I just tap borrow and I'm, I'm good to go. I also want to point out that there is a little button underneath borrow that says tag. And tags will become important a little later on when I get to that. But just know that every title, ebooks, audiobooks, and magazines have that tag option. If you scroll down, you'll see the back issues. So that's what my second screenshot is showing. The back issues probably go back a couple of years to when they were added to RV Digital and now they've moved over to, to Overdrive. The little rectangle, it's a black and blue rectangle that will let you borrow it. So you don't have to tap on the cover, just tap the little rectangle and you can get the, the back issues. <clears throat> I can't trust anymore that it's actually changing, so I have to keep looking. So once you tap borrow, you're taken to the confirmation screen. You'll see that right up at the top, it says you're getting it for 14 days. And if you're a regular Libby user, you know that for ebooks and audiobooks, you can change that. But with the magazines, we can't. So we're just stuck with the 14 days. If it does expire on you, you'll just renew it or check it out again and just keep doing that until you're done with it. When I tap borrow to confirm my checkout, you'll see the second screenshot. And this is important because the first time you check out a magazine issue, Libby is prompting you. 
I'm not sure how clearly it came out, so I'll, I'll read it to you. It asks, would you like to be notified of new issues? Add a smart tag to this title to subscribe. RV Digital used to do this. It was worded differently, and it asked, did you want to be emailed whenever new issues were released? Overdrive just updated this, so this is kind of new to library staff as, as well, so bear with us as we try to get notifications working properly. But you tap on show me how, and Libby will walk you through creating what it's calling a tag in order to be notified about new issues. So I mentioned tags before, but I didn't really explain it. A tag is a sort of label. So you're assigning a name or a tag to a collection of something. In this case, we're assigning a tag to magazine titles where we want to be notified about new issues. In order to create the notification, we have to call what Lydia is calling a, noti a notify me tag. So on the bottom of my first screenshot, it says create a notify me tag. I tapped on that. In my middle screenshot, Libby is asking me, what do I want to call this tag? It makes some suggestions. So it suggested notify, it suggested subscribe, and there are a couple of symbols up there. One is an envelope and one is a mailbox, but I decided to just type something in. So I called my tag new issue, so I'll know exactly what it is. Then you tap on create, and then you're good to go. You created the notification for new issues of this magazine. Depending on how your notifications are set up, you'll either get an email or you'll get a notification on your phone or your tablet. And I'll get to notifications in, in a little bit so you know what I'm talking about. In my third screenshot, I wanted to point out that because I have created this tag, when I go to another magazine, a few days later, I checked out Good Housekeeping. Libby prompted me that I want to be notified about new issues, and I did. But in this case, my tag just shows up. Down at the bottom, it says new issue. I tap on my tag, the notification is added, and now I'm being notified about two magazines, HGTV and the Good House TV one. We're going to leave all the talk about tags and notifications for a minute so that you can see what navigating within a magazine looks like. Once I downloaded my magazine, you see the cover first. If you tap in the middle, a menu drops down from the top and a menu pops up from the bottom. Along the bottom, we have thumbnails of the magazine pages. You can scroll, swipe through those, and you can tap on any of the thumbnails and it will take you to that page. Above my thumbnails, it says chapters. If I tap on chapters, then you see what is in my second screenshot. I get a list of all the articles. I can scroll down. I can tap on any of those articles, and Libby will jump me to the page. So you can move around the magazine that way, jumping around instead of flipping page by page. And I'd also like to point out two symbols that are in the top menu. I Outline them in red because they're a little hard to see. The first one is the zoom option, and then the second one is the letter A. That is our font size option. The zoom option lets you control the size of things in magazine view, and the A lets you adjust things in article view. And now I'll show you what I mean by magazine versus article view. So here is a screenshot of magazine view. This is how magazines open by default. This means you're looking at the electronic magazine the same way you'd be looking at it in print as if you were flipping through it. In order to make things look bigger, you use the zoom function. So if I were to tap on the middle, my menu drops down, the zoom symbol appears, and I can zoom in. It starts to, to get a little tricky to navigate because you zoom in, but then everything is blown up. So now you have to swipe left and right and up and down to actually move around the magazine pages. If you're using Libby on a very tiny screen, I sometimes use it on my iPhone. It's not the easiest way to read a magazine, but then that gets a little tricky trying to zoom in on a big magazine page. On the tablets and the smartphones, you don't have to use the zoom function. You can just pinch in, pinch out, 
and navigate with your finger. So, so that's a little easy, but not terribly easy. And that is why we might want to use article view. To get to article view, you tap in the middle of the screen, and I've outlined it in red on my screenshot. It's a piece of paper in that little black circle. When I tap on article view, it looks like this. I still get to see photos and illustrations, but everything is arranged in one column. So all I have to do is scroll down until I get to the end of the article. Depending on your screen size, the text might be very small. If I tap in the middle, then I get the A up at the top menu, which will let me control the font size. Or what that looks like. Controlling the font size looks like this. You get the text scale slider, so drag it to the right and your font size will increase. If you take it all the way to the right and it still doesn't look big enough, Libby does now have accessibility sizes. So that's what you see underneath the text scale slider. You turn on accessibility sizes and you can make the font a little bit bigger. You change your font and then you also have the lighting options. So bright is what we're looking at right now. It's the white background with the black text. You can do sepia and that gives it yellow overtones or you can do dark, which is the black background with the white text. I have sometimes found it's easier to read the dark in low light settings instead of a bright white. On my phone, I only use article view because that is just easiest. But if you're on a tablet or on a computer, you might find that the zoom function in magazine view works just fine. Pointing at you. That's what's going on. Thank you. Okay, so we started by picking a magazine from the popular collection on the main page, but you might want to find more titles beyond just those 70 titles that were highlighted. If you want to browse for more magazines, you go back to our homepage. So that's when you tap on the little library card at the bottom, scroll down a little, and you'll see what Libby is calling guides. These guides are meant to help patrons find titles more easily, and Overdrive created a guide for magazines. So we'll tap on that. And this is what you see next. You're taken to a page where all of the magazines are broken out into different categories. So at the top of the page, they put news and politics. Keep scrolling and you'll see lots of other categories. We have health and fitness, food and cooking, tech and gaming, crafts and hobbies, travel and outdoor, photography, home and garden, there are a few others as well. You can tap on the, the subject heading. So in this case, I could tap on news and politics and I'll be taken to the list where I can browse all of the magazines that are designated as news and politics. Or if you're feeling very adventurous, click on all titles, which is right underneath the big magazines heading. And when you do that, we are now on a page that has 2,700 magazine titles. <laughs> so you can scroll through all of them. You'll be scrolling for a very long time. And the list is automatically arranged by date added. So this means the date when new issues are added <laughs> to magazines. That also means that sometimes what you see rise to the top of the list are more obscure titles, or you'll see foreign language titles. So you probably don't want to leave it sorted that way because you might, I see these magazines and I don't really know what they are except for the Vogue Singapore one, which I can kind of figure out what that is. So what you want to do once you're here is click on the refine button. It's a little grayed out but it's over on the right hand side. And when you tap on it, that menu drops down. And now you can go in and modify what you're looking at. So the big one here is subject because that will give you the listing of categories we were seeing on the previous page. But it's a very concise list. So you save yourself all the scrolling down the previous page. Another one that might be good, maybe is the foreign language option because we have magazines in about 20 different foreign languages. So if you have a second language or if you're learning a new language, you can pick your language and see what kinds of magazines we have for that. 
We have an audience category because we have, in addition to adult magazines, we also have teen and juvenile magazines. You could also change your sorting options. So instead of doing the date added, you could organize it by title, or you could organize it by popularity, and the popular titles would rise to the top. It wouldn't necessarily be the titles that we have in our popular collection because we were basing that on previous checkouts through our digital. Do some exploring and see what you find. I've been talking about the Libby app all this time, and probably the majority of our patrons are using the Libby app on a tablet or on a smartphone, but there are a few other ways to gain access to our magazines. Our computer users and our Kindle Fire users are either using our digital library of Illinois collection in the browser, or they're going in through the Overdrive app. You can still access magazines through those two options. But you should know that when you do that, I shouldn't dance. Okay. Um, but when, when you do that in the Overdrive app and in the Digital Library of Illinois website, you're reading the magazines in the browser. You lose the download option. So you'll need to have the internet connection to read the magazines. And if you're reading in the browser, that also means that you've lost article view. So you'll have to use magazine view and do the zoom function in order to make things a little bit bigger. So if you don't have a Libby app, and if you try to try accessing the magazines on Digital Library of Illinois or um, through the Overdrive app, and it's not working for you because you don't like the zoom function, you can also use Libby in the browser. So you open your, a browser on your computer or on a device if you want to, and you type libbyapp.com into the URL box. And if any of you are Kindle Fire users, I have something you can do for me. I have been wondering if the Libby app will work in the Silk browser. So when you go home, if you could just fire up your Kindle Fire and type libbyapp.com into the, the Silk browser, does it work or not? Call the library, say Pam wants to know, and give me that answer. I would greatly appreciate that. And the reason you would want to go to Libby in the browser is that even though the magazines won't download, Article View will work in Libby in the browser. So that might make it easier for you to read the magazines. Now we're moving into the slightly more complex qualities of the Libby app. I already talked about notifications a little bit in terms of the new issue for magazines notifications, but Libby wants to notify you about all sorts of things. So our notification button is the little Libby head at the bottom of the screen, right in the middle. And a lot of times you'll see that it has a number on it. I think in this screenshot, I had the number three up there. So that means Libby wants to tell me three things. And when I tapped on it, this window off to the right opened up. And up at the top, it says that I have a hold ready to borrow. So Libby is trying to notify me about that. But I had three messages. So that means I have to swipe to the right on that notification. And then I'll see my next notification. The first screenshot here is my second one. It's telling me that one of my magazines is coming due. So do I want to re renew it? My second screenshot is another magazine coming up for, for renewal. So do I want to renew it? And once you've gone through all of your notifications, you'll see one last one. And it's Libby trying to get you to manage your, your notifications. So when I tap on that, if you haven't used Libby much or if you have a fresh install of Libby, you see this screen where Libby asks you, how would you like to be notified about things? You can either enable push notifications or you can receive email notifications. So it's one or the other. A lot of you are probably familiar with email, email notifications because this is what Overdrive has been doing for, for years. If you pick that option, the next screen asks you to type in your email address and you're good to go. That's all you have to do. 
But if you pick push notifications, that means you want notifications to come through on your device. So on my phone, this looks um, like when I wake up my phone, I'll see that Libby has done something and it flashes very quickly. I usually can't read it all before my phone opens up, but I know that Libby is trying to tell me something. But in order to enable push notifications, you're not just turning them on in Libby, you also have to turn them on on your device. So I have an iPhone. That means I have to go into my iPhone settings and go through the list of all the things that want to notify me, find Libby, and tell the iPhone to allow notifications. And I have to pick how I wanted those notifications to look. So I picked the banner mode where it just flashes across the top. Once I did that, then my menu options changed. And these are the two screenshots you're seeing. I can choose to ignore notifications. So you might do that for things like loan expiring or that a loan has already expired, but I've left all my notifications on. The middle option is a menu badge, and these are the little numbers on top of the little head. So in the case of my loans expiring or having lapsed, I don't really need those to pop up on my phone. I just let them come across the little Libby notification head. And then I've got the notification option, which is the third one, and that's where they are coming through on my phone, so I can't miss it because I've got to see the notification every time I use the phone. And I should also point out, at the bottom of the list, you'll see we have two options for Notify Me. Notify Me series is what is working in tandem with the magazine new issue notifications that we were talking about. So that's why you see that I have the notification turned on. Every time a new issue is released, it flashes on, on my phone. When you read the, the text there, which is too tiny for me to read, so I'm going to try to remember it. It looks like Overdrive is indicating that at some point, the series will encompass more than just the magazines that you might be able to be notified when a book in a book series that you're reading has been released. And you'll notice we also have Notify Me Author. So maybe you'll be notified when an author that you like has released a new book and it's been added to the collection. Those haven't gone live yet, and I don't know when they will, but because they put them there, it must be coming hopefully soon. But for now, the only thing that works with Notify Me is the new magazine issues. If you enable the push magazines on your phone and tablet and later decide that you really like the emails and now you want to take it back, you should just be able to turn off the notification in your devices settings. So I would go to my iPhone, I'd go to settings, and I would just turn notifications off for Libby. And in that case, I'm resetting the app and I'll see the original screen we saw where it asked me, what did I want? Push notifications or to receive email notifications. But if you're trying to do that and it doesn't work, give me a call at the library and we'll try to figure it out. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about tags. And if you don't remember any of this, it's okay, but I thought I'd cover it because we've already used a tag with the new magazine issue notification thing. So we created a tag for that. But Libby also has already created some tags for you as well. I'm not sure that patrons necessarily pay attention to the tags, though. So to find the tags, you're gonna, going to go to your bookshelf. So that's the line of book spines at the bottom. It takes you to your shelf. And your shelf will show you what you have checked out and what you have on hold. But if you look across the top, in addition to where it says loans and holds, there's a little piece of paper up there. That's a tag. And I also had the option to see more. So when I tap on more, you see what is in my second screenshot. I have some tags there. So the first tag is a Libby created one, and it's a stack of books. And Libby doesn't give it a name, so stack of books can mean whatever you want it to mean, but I consider it my to be read pile. So if I add books to that tag, 
to me, that means that it's something I want to come back to. I didn't check it out. I didn't place a hold, but I need to remember it somehow. So I'm tagging it with a stack of books. We have the little checklist on the piece of paper. That is a smart tag because you're not doing anything with that tag. Libby is. Every time you check something out, Libby is adding it to that tag. So if you want to see what you've checked out in the past, you can click on that little symbol and it will take you to it. We've got a cake symbol because that stands for sample. Anytime you choose to read a sample or listen to a sample, Libby is also tracking that. So you can go to the little cake symbol and see what you've sampled. And the last one I have up there is a little bell. And on my phone, I use that bell for my new magazine issue notifications. So all the magazines on my iPhone Libby app that I choose to be notified about will show up with that little underneath that little bell <clears throat> symbol. And I also have what is an Oh, well, I called it OD wish list. OD stands for overdrive. Some of you may know that on the Digital Library of Illinois website, there is a wish list feature. So you can tap on the wish list symbol and overdrive keeps track of all the books you added to that list. They recently enabled syncing the list on the website to a list in the, in the Libby app. They asked me to give it a name when I did the sync. So I called it my OD wish list. You may receive notifications about that if you have a wish list on the Digital Library of Illinois website and you start using Libby. It should walk you through the process of adding it to Libby. And once you add it, the wish list will sync from Libby to the website. So that list is the only list that talks to the website. Everything else, unfortunately, is local to your Libby device. I use Libby on my iPad, on my iPhone, on the computer. <clears throat> the, the tags that I have here in my iPhone do not show up on my iPad. They don't show up on Libby in the browser. So you'll just want to remember if you start using tags, it's local to your device. It doesn't trans transfer anywhere else. And that is when the actions button over on the right hand side at the top comes into play for, for the tags. The actions button will let you delete a tag. If you do that, you also lose all the titles in your tag. You can also export the titles in a tag. And you might want to do this if you've got a bunch of titles under a tag and you either need to remove, you either need to remove the, the Libby app. We don't have to advise patrons to do this very often, but occasionally if you need to fix a glitch, we might tell you, let's uninstall it and do a new install. But in that case, you lose your tags. So we would suggest to you that you export your tags if you really need them. Or if you're upgrading to a new device. So I did that recently. I did not export any of my tags. I opened up the Libby app. And I was a little horrified because I had a tag with a lot of books in it and I lost them all. Lesson learned. And then the timeline, just very quickly, because this is an easy one. The timeline is just Libby tracking your checkouts, the holes you place, and when titles are returned. So you tap on the little clock and you see the list and the list goes back to when you originally installed the Libby app and started checking things out. But you also have an actions button with the timeline, which will let you export the timeline in case you have to do another install or upgrade to a new device. You could choose to disable the activity reporting altogether. So if you don't think you need Libby tracking all of that, disable it. You can also clear it out by removing all activities. Again, if you don't think you need any of this and you'd rather not have the, the clutter there. That does it for Libby, but very quickly, we'll move on to Hoopla. We're in the home stretch now, so not too much longer. <laughs> Hoopla is our collection of ebooks, audiobooks, comics, music, and movies. You can access Hoopla on a computer. You can download the app to use on a tablet or smartphone. And you also can use Hoopla on your TV, on a smart TV, or if you have a device that you plug into your TV to make it smart. I have put the link to hoopladigital.com slash help on this slide. 
because they have a section there where they explain what TVs and what devices are supported. I don't have one of those kinds of TVs or device, so I've never actually tried this on a TV, but go for it. Let me know how it works out for you. All of the titles in Hoopla are available all of the time. So a lot of patrons prefer this to Libby because there are no wait lists. Anything you see can be checked out. Last year, we increased the checkout limit to 10, much like we increased things for Libby. Please note that on a computer, you are streaming content. So you need the internet connection, but and on the TV as well, it would all be streaming. But if you have a mobile device with the Hoopla app, then you can download the content. And that way, if you're traveling, you can still watch or listen to or read whatever it is that you have checked out. The first time you sign in, this is a little different from Libby. The first time you sign in, you're asked for your library card and you're asked to pick your home library. But then you end up creating an account with an email address and a password. And if you have more than one device, or if you're going to use the TV, then you type in the email address and the password. You just need the library card for that initial time that you create the account. If you're an ebook and audiobook reader and you've been using Libby all this time, you might wonder how the collection differs from, from Hoopla. And the answer to that is that Libby tends to have more of the popular best-selling titles, especially in the ebooks. <clears throat> Whereas Hoopla maybe doesn't have the best sellers right away. It may take some years before they make their way into Hoopla. But I have found that Hoopla is really good for the audiobooks. So if you are an audiobook listener, give Hoopla a try. They've got a big collection, they have a lot of the popular authors. Our audiobook collection in Libby is kind of small, so this would give you more options. I won't go too in depth into Hoopla, but there are just a few things I wanted to point out. I'm showing App View today, but if you look at it on a computer, it looks very similar. You should still be able to find all of the things that I'm talking about today. In App View, our menu runs along the bottom. So my Hoopla takes you to the page that we're seeing right now. Video will let you browse for both movies and television. Music is music albums. Books will let you browse for ebooks, audiobooks, and the comics. And at the end, you have the search feature. So if you have a specific title or a specific author, tap search and type it in. In the app and in the browser, there are always banners that run along the top of the screen. And I got a banner up there right now. The banner that I'm displaying is showing recommended next reading for book clubs, but the banners change fairly frequently and they can give you a starting point for browsing if you're not sure what you want to check out. They highlight the banners, highlight all sorts of formats and titles, and you might run across something that you wouldn't have thought of checking out on your own. I am currently in the home tab of my Hoopla. So in the home tab, you start out with the recently, your recently borrowed stuff. If you see a play symbol on the cover, that means it is something currently checked out to you. So I only have one current checkout. All the other titles are not checked out to me. It's just part of my history and Hoopla is highlighting that. Underneath my borrows, there is a recommended for you category. And we'll touch on that in a couple of more slides. And if you keep scrolling down the page, you'll see other stuff to browse. So further down, we get things like popular ebooks, popular audio, popular movies, popular television. If you tap on the borrow tab in my Google, it's showing me what is currently checked out up at the top, but then it's showing me my history down below and it shows me when all of these titles got returned so I can pinpoint when I was reading it. At the bottom, there is a tiny link that says show complete history. If I tap on that, I see my entire history going all the way back to when I originally downloaded Hoopla and started checking things out. I don't have screenshots of what I'm about to describe next, but once you're in your history, there will be an edit button. You can choose to delete specific titles if you want to. You will also see the option to clear out your history completely if you don't care for Hoopla to be tracking that. And now I will call your attention to the little gear in the upper right hand corner, which you probably all know means it will take us to our settings. 
And the reason I want to go to settings is because Hoopla has an option for recommendation settings. So on, on a couple of screens ago, we saw that Hoopla is recommending titles for you. And Hoopla is making these recommendations partly based on what you have checked out in the past. I've noticed that when I check out a book in a series, Hoopla tends to recommend the other books in the series. I check out a lot of mysteries. Hoopla recommends a lot of mysteries to me. But I can modify it and tell it to recommend other sorts of things. So my second screenshot is showing you that. Once you open up recommendation settings, you see the format. It starts with ebooks, but then you'll see music, movies, television. And it's giving you lots of little different categories that you can tap on to get more recommendations or maybe fewer recommendations if you have a lot of things tapped on. And the last thing about Google, there is a way for you to browse titles and find something to check out within our different formats. So in this screenshot, I tapped on video so I could look at the movies and the television. And this isn't right at the top, so you have to scroll a little bit down, but you'll see the big blue button in the middle that says, I've forgotten what it says, genres and collections. And when you tap on that, it will give you more ways to pick specific categories. So I opened it up in movies, and then it gives me the option for collections and the option for genres. Collections are groups of things around a specific theme, but at the top of collections, you'll see we have some lists that start with zeros and then HAPL. Those are library lists, so we created those for our patrons to look at. We started them with zeros because on the website, they tend to fall to the bottom of the list, but with the zeros, we manage to make them rise back up to the top. Or if you pick genre, then you'll see categories that you're more used to. So things like action and adventure, comedies, inspirational family movies. I am going to wrap it up now, but I leave you with two more pieces of information. If you are an Ella Johnson card holder, you do have access to Libby and Hoopla. Ella Johnson provides that for their patrons. I checked their website and they said that they are offering magazines through Libby, so you should be able to access their collection of magazines. If you go in first directly by going in through the app, you just want to make sure that you pick Ella Johnson as your home library because it's going to ask you for that card number. Secondly, if you're using Libby or Hoopla or even anything else at home and it's giving you trouble, please give us a call because we really want to help you out so you can use our resources. For stuff like this, you generally get referred to my colleague Rob Abe or me. I thought he said no. No, we don't get referred to you. Where are they sending you? But okay, all right, no. Um, <laughs> But we do ask, if you can, call first because we hate for you to come and it's the one day where neither he nor I are there and somebody else can't help you out. But always, when you run into trouble, give us a call. Questions? Oh, I'm open for questions. Um, one of the first questions I have is, there's an expiration date on my library card. Is that a driver to accessing all of this, or how does that get updated besides going to the library? Okay, expiration dates. If your card has expired, they expire every three years. And, and we do that just so we can check your address and make sure there haven't been changes to your info or it has changed to be updated. You will find that you get blocked almost right away from, from Libby and Hoopla. So you have two options. If you are comfortable coming into the library, you come in, we ask to see your ID, and we give you another three years. We know that there are some patrons that are, are still a little weary of coming into public places, or if you've been to our new building, you know that the new entrance is up and incline and not really close to the parking lot. So our circulation department has been doing online library card renewals. So there is a, a page that you go to. I don't know the URL, so you have to call the circulation department to get that. But what they ask you to do is take a photo or scan your driver's license, 
then you send that to them. They make sure all of your information is correct. So they might reply back to, to what you send to them. Is, is your email address still correct? Is the phone number still correct? But they will update the card for another three years if you can't come into the library. Second question would be on the movie list from Hoopla. Um, are those movies free? Or are they just like if you come in and get a, a VHS tape or, or a CD or whatever in the library, are they equal? So they are free. Nothing in Hoopla, there is nothing in Hoopla or Libby that you have to pay for because we've already paid for it. They're not necessarily the newest movies because to give you access to the newest movies would cost us so much. We'd maybe be able to hand out five of them and we'd have to call it a day. So they're older titles, but when you check them out, you the, the big difference is we let you check out DVDs for a week and then you can keep renewing them. In Hoopla, you get 72 hours because they figure if you checked it out, you're gonna watch it right away. So you get it for 72 hours, and at that point it expires and they take it away from you. But you could check it out again if you didn't get to it. But no charge for it. And I think I answered all your questions. Before our crowd gets thinner, I did want to point out that I should have had our new officers stand up. So those that are still here, David Good, Teresa, Molly, and Howie, if you could stand up and welcome to 2021 officers. Go back to questions, and the one thing I did want to point out is we are taping this, and it will show up on YouTube. Uh, what does it take us? 24 hours, 48 hours to get it. Downloaded into Shelley. Ask Shelley. <laughs> Question: uh, What resources do you have available for genealogy research? So the big one is Ancestry, and I believe they have extended the remote access from home until September. But you may want to call the library just to double check me on that. So we have Ancestry. We have Heritage Quest. We have a new one. I want to say we now have access to Fold 3 as well. And there was one other one, and I'm blanking on it. If you call the library, we, we can tell you what they are because we'll be able to see it. But if you go to our website, huntleylibrary.org, we have in the top menu a link to online resources. When you click on that, you'll get a list. Genealogy will be an option. You'll find them all grouped there. So it will show you the ones that have remote access and even the ones that don't. Although right now they all do have remote access. Pam, uh, I have a quick question. Could you briefly uh, mention how you can access uh, local newspapers such as the uh, Daily Herald? Yes. So on our online resources page. So what I just said, go to huntleylibrary.org, top menu, online resources. There should be a heading for newspapers. And I'm trying to remember what the collection is called. I want to say news bank. Don't quote me on that. Um, go to the page, take a look, or call the library. From home, when you click on it, and if it says click on this link, you do want to click right on top of the words this link. It's going to ask you for your library card number to verify that you are a Huntley patron. So you type that in, then it lets you in. And usually the search is very broad, but you should be able to narrow it to specific newspapers. So I believe the Northwest Herald is in that collection. I want to say the Daily Herald is as well. And then we've got a bunch of other ones in the state and nationwide. Does that include Wall Street Journal? No. <laughs> it's too expensive yeah. probably to add to our collection. Yeah. Okay, we have a question back here. I read hundreds of books. So if I go to check one out, will it tell me you already read this or do I have to go to my own library? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Unfortunately, no, it will not notify you that you've already read it. <laughs> I know they have to read a few pages. <laughs> More questions? The mic is coming. Hang on, please. What devices are going to access your ebook list? Particularly, uh, I have a Kindle Paperwhite. Can I access your ebooks? So, with the Kindle Paperwhite, we consider that a, a basic e reader. Those Kindles can only access the Digital Library of Illinois collection. Uh, so, that means in a browser, you go to <coughs> dlil.info and you sign in, browse the collection. When you pick out an ebook, because it can only do the ebooks, you'll see an option for read on Kindle, and then you're redirected to the Amazon website and they finish pushing out the book to you. But because Amazon is controlling the, the downloading of the material, you can only use the Digital Library of Illinois collection. So that's the only collection that supports the basic Kindle readers. If you have a Kindle Fire, in that case, you could do the the Kindle book option, or you download the OverDrive app. And the reason you download the OverDrive app is because if you are an audiobook listener, the OverDrive app will let you check out the audiobooks as well. On a Kindle Fire, the Hoopla app should also work, and you should be able to access all of the content. And then we have the Android devices and the Apple devices, and they can do both but they can also do the Libby app. So if you're going to use the Digital Library of Illinois collection and your Android device or your Apple device supports it, we suggest going in through Libby now because that is the newer app. And it seems to be that that is where Overdrive is putting all of their effort now. So they will, because that is what they are supporting probably the best. When you get notified on Libby that a hold is available, how long do you have until it goes away? And how do you find it again if you miss that time? Oh, okay. So, Overdrive gives you 72 hours to check out your hold, and they're pretty exact about it, down to the minute. But a lot of people were missing out on their holds, so Overdrive decided to do this. When your hold becomes available, your 72 hours are up and you didn't check it out. The first time this happens, they will pause your hold. They suspend it. So they suspend it for seven days. They put you back in the wait list. You wait your turn and then the hold comes in for you again. So you get one chance to get a do-over if you miss your hold. But the second time, if the 72 hours are up, Overdrive says, too bad. <laughs> they just take you off the list altogether, and you would have to put the hold on again. But there is a little grace period in case you miss it the first time around. Yes, uh, Pam, I understand that the library has eliminated fines. What is the reasoning behind that? Okay, so eliminating fines. We found that we, it's not a big money maker number one and for some of the items the fines were already on the low side and we didn't we don't want to put up obstacles and we know that sometimes well COVID was just its own very weird thing but in the winter we know that sometimes it's hard to get stuff back to us in a timely manner so because it wasn't bringing in a lot of funds um, and in some cases, even with fines, stuff just never makes its way back to us. We decided we take away that barrier. And what we do now is we renew the item, but at about, I never remember the exact date, at about either 30 days or 45 days, if the item has not come back to us, we bill the patron for the item. And we are hoping that will be incentive enough to get our our books and materials back. So if you need a little extra time, you've got it now. Just not too much extra time because then we're wondering what happened to our item. 
Any other questions? Any chance of getting a book return box here? So a lot of you know that we got rid of our book return box at, at the Jewel. And, and the reasoning behind that was there weren't very many items in the return when we would go pick it up. So because it takes a lot of staff time to go get it, someone has to drive, someone has to bring it back. On the days we're closed, someone still has to go get it. In the winter, in snowstorms, someone still has to go get it. We decided to take it away. But the reason, part of the reason we took it away is because we also went fine free. So now we know it's inconvenience that there isn't a box out here. And we, I don't believe there will be a box out here. So if you can't make it to the library because of the terrible weather, the cold, or just something you have going on, because we don't have the fines, you can hang on to it until you can get to us. But also, because we are making the drive through and we'll have that at the beginning of next year, you won't have to get out of your car anymore to actually bring our stuff back. Just go through the drive through drop it off. I know it's not the perfect answer, but we were finding that that return bin at an offsite location was a bit hard for us to handle. More questions? The last thing is we need to give Shelly a wonderful round of applause for for coming over and sharing all of this information. And if there's any other questions, you can come up and talk to Pam after we break up. And don't forget, uh, we have our interest list at the front table, so don't forget to sign up if you're interested um, in helping uh, out the computer club. And thank you all for coming. And uh,